2021 postseason run for the Saints might be Drew Brees' last hurrah. So before Drew ends his one-of-a-kind career, let's see what got him here. Left, he's got room. Across the line of scrimmage, he goes into the end zone! Touchdown! Drew Brees! Ever since he was drafted in 2001, the San Diego Chargers have selected quarterback from Purdue, Drew Brees. Drew Brees has always been one of the biggest underdogs in the NFL and has always been great, but not on the level of Peyton Manning or Tom Brady. But you know what? I'd argue that Drew Brees is one of the best quarterbacks of all time. In 2001, Drew Brees was drafted to the San Diego Chargers with a 32nd pick, and was funny enough to pick after Ladanian Tomlinson, who was involved in a trade that put Mike Vick on the Falcons and Drew Brees and Ladanian Tomlinson on the Chargers. It seems like the trade worked out for both sides and was the start to a few Hall of Fame careers. Drew started as a backup to the legend that is Doug Flutie and because of that he wasn't able to play until November 4th, 2001, while Doug was in concussion protocol. In that game, Drew passed for 221 yards and his first career touchdown, but that would be the only game he played that year. Somehow, going into 2002, Drew was named the starter, and the team started off hot as they began the year 6-1, but really lost their mojo after that and went 2-7 to finish off the year. That season was shaky for Drew, and although he passed for over 3,200 yards and 17 touchdowns, he also had 16 picks with most coming in the second half of the year. 2003 started off terribly for the Chargers as they went 1-7 and, and because of that Drew was replaced by Doug, although he was able to get the starting spot back in week 15 and finish off the year. That season Drew passed for over 2100 yards and 11 touchdowns but also threw 15 interceptions and was looking to be a bust. Drew's career was in limbo following the Chargers selection of NC State standout Philip Rivers in 2004, but Drew was able to save his job as he had a phenomenal training camp and preseason. And upon that, Philip was held out of training camp, so the job was Drew's to lose. Drew was able to remain the starter throughout the 2004 season as he had by far his best year with over 3,100 yards and 27 touchdowns to go along with only 7 picks. It seems like the competition at quarterback really drove Drew to his full potential and the Chargers did very well as they went 12-4 and, and he was even named to the Pro Bowl. But sadly, the Chargers lost to the Jets in the wild card 20-17. Drew became a free agent in 2005 and was expected to go elsewhere as the Chargers had recently drafted Rivers. But instead, he stayed with the team and after a rough 0-2 start, Drew led the team to a 9-7 record and passed for over 3,500 yards and was having a breakout year. Until the last game of the year where Drew tore his labrum trying to pick up a fumble. Please. On the blitz, ball knocked loose, standing on the goal line and recovered it looked like maybe by Brandon of the Bronco. Following the injury, Drew underwent arthroscopic surgery to repair the torn labrum on his throwing arm on January 5th, 2006. Following his best year to date, Drew was offered a five-year, $50 million contract, which Drew denied, and in turn, Drew was sent into free agency. After Drew denied the offer, he met with two teams, the Nick Saban-led Miami Dolphins and the New Orleans Saints. Miami was unsure if Drew's arm had completely healed, and doctors suggested to not sign him in fear of his health. That left only one team in the New Orleans Saints, who were at the lowest point imaginable following Hurricane Katrina. By the way, instead of signing Drew, the Dolphins got a much older Dante Culpepper. The Saints had a literally disastrous 2005 year as they couldn't play in their stadium due to Hurricane Katrina and limped to a 3-13 record. After such a year, there was no way to go but up, and the Saints took full advantage of their new star quarterback in Drew, and the team bounced back along with their city and finished with a much better 10-6 record and was even able to win the NFC South after finishing last the season before. That year, Drew outdid himself with over 4,400 yards and 26 touchdowns, along with only 11 picks, but sadly was runner-up to win the MVP to his old teammate in LT. On January 13, 2007, the Saints played against the Eagles in the divisional round and beat them 27-24 at home in front of a wild New Orleans crowd. After winning the divisional matchup, the Saints played the Bears and got destroyed 39-14, and their Cinderella season was over. Following such a great year in 2006, the Saints struggled at the start of their 2007 year and started off 0-4, but then went on to win the next four games to get to 500. Although things were looking to change, the year ended rough for the Saints as they went 3-5 in their last eight games and missed the playoffs, although Breeze yet again passed for over 4,400 yards and 28 touchdowns. Going into 2008, Drew and the Saints were looking towards the playoffs, but fell short as the team only improved to an 8-8 record. Even with the tough year for the team, Drew passed for over 5,000 yards and was only the second quarterback to do it since Dan Marino, and because of it, was named the AP Offensive Player of the Year. Throughout these years, Drew was putting up great statistical seasons, but the Saints performed subpar and thus began the idea that Drew was simply a stat stuffer. 
In 2009, Drew decided to prove all the haters wrong and led the team to a 13-0 start. And although they lost their last three games, the Saints remain at the number one seed in the NFC. That season, Drew passed for over 4,300 yards and 34 touchdowns, along with only 11 picks, and the Saints looked as good as ever. Although Drew had a solid year, he yet again was runner-up to Peyton Manning, which was very ironic. Anyways, following the solid season, the Saints routed the Cardinals 45-14 and matched up against the Brett Favre-led Vikings in the NFC Championship and won. But at what cost, as the idea of Bounty Gate began to become realized as a defensive coordinator, Greg Williams sent out bounties to players like Brett Favre. But anyways, the Saints won the game in a shootout, 31-28 in OT, and finally made it to the Super Bowl against the Peyton Manning-led Indianapolis Colts and somehow won 31-17 after a genius onside kick to start off the second half. And as you would guess, Drew won the MVP of the game and proved that he was one of the best in the league. After winning the Super Bowl, the Saints' next goal was to get another, and in 2010, the Saints looked good with an 11-5 record, but were eliminated in the wildcard round against the Seahawks in the renowned Beast Quake game by Marshawn Lynch, 41-36. The 2011 season for Drew was record-breaking as he broke Dan Marino's single-season passing yardage record with 5,084 in only 15 games and passed for a franchise record 46 touchdowns along with over 5,400 yards, and led the Saints to the playoffs with another 13-3 season, and bested the Lions 45-28, but sadly lost in the divisional round to the 49ers 36-32. Sadly, the Saints lost, and Breeze wasn't even the MVP as Rodgers won with over 4,600 yards and 45 touchdowns, along with only 6 picks, and he led the Packers to a Super Bowl. In 2011, they were the best in the world. In 2012, the Bounty Gate scandal was brought to life, and the Saints let go of DC Greg Williams and head coach Sean Payton was suspended for the entire year and because of that the team fell off and only went 7-9 even though Drew passed for over 5,100 yards and 43 touchdowns. If you're curious why the Saints had such a bad record following a great year by Breeze, look no further to the fact that the Saints gave up an all-time NFL record 7,042 yards of offense and because of that the team missed the playoffs. In 2013 Breeze had his third straight 5,000 yard year. And along with that, Sean Payton was back and the Saints went 11-5, but lost to the Seahawks yet again in the divisional round, the team that eventually won the Super Bowl that year. Drew just kept putting up stats and stats and stats, and in 2014, he had over 4,900 passing yards, but sadly ended his 5,000-yard passing streak at 3. And upon that, the Saints only went 7-9, and and as you would guess, they missed the playoffs. In 2015, Drew threw for over 4,800 yards, despite missing a game with injury, and yet the team only went 7-9. There seems to be a constant thread throughout these years. As Drew has a great year statistically, the Saints fall below expectations. Well, I would chalk it down to one simple area, defense. As I stated before, the Saints defense was awful, and the reason Drew was putting up so many yards was because of the fact that he had to keep scoring points to keep up with the opposing offenses, and in turn, he put up great stats, but the Saints performed underwhelmingly. Well, the Saints did it again, and in 2016, they went 7-9 once again, and Breeze became the 6th player ever to throw for over 50,000 yards on one team. And that year, he passed for over 5,200 yards and 37 touchdowns, but the team let him down once again. Things began to change in 2017, and as Drew passed for over 70,000 yards, the Saints went 11-5 as they improved their defense, and the Saints were back in the playoffs, and beat the Panthers 31-26 to put them up against the Vikings. And you know the rest. Steps into it, passes, caught! Diggs! The Saints lost in a heartbreaking fashion, but had become a much better team than before. Going into 2018, the Saints had Super Bowl hopes and went 13-3, with Breeze passing for just under 4,000 yards and 32 touchdowns, along with setting the NFL record for completion percentage at 74.4%. But against the Eagles in the divisional round, the Saints started off super slow, as they were down 14-0. But the Saints rallied back and put up 20 unanswered points to win and make the NFC Championship game for the first time since their Super Bowl season in 2009. The Saints matched up against the Rams and were looking to be Super Bowl bound until... Officials talk to each other. Crowd's going crazy as there's no flag right on the Saints sideline. The Rams got away with one of the most obvious pass interference calls in the game as they won in overtime 26-23. 2019 was a tough year for Breeze as he missed 5 games, but he still had over 2,900 yards and an amazing 73.4% completion percentage, second only to his previous year, and upon that he broke Peyton Manning's all-time touchdown record against the Colts out of all teams.
That game, Brees was almost perfect as he completed 29 of 30 passes with 20 straight completions and had an NFL record 96.7% completion rate. In 2019, the Saints went 13-3 once again and were put up against the Vikings at the Superdome, but were unable to close it out and Minnesota took it 26-20 in overtime. To start off 2020, Drew Brees signed a two-year, $50 million deal and he was playing great until a collapsed lung kept him out of four games. Until he came back against Kansas City in week 15, in a shootout that ended 32-29. During the following game against the Vikings on Christmas Day, Breeze passed 80,000 yards in a game where Alvin Kamara had six touchdowns and the Saints won easily 52-33 to clinch their fourth straight NFC South title. Not only was the 80,000 yards the best in NFL history, it passed CFL quarterback Anthony Calvillo for the most yards in any professional gridiron game, which is wild as the fields in the CFL are 121 yards. But anyways, in the wild card, the Saints went off against the Bears on Nickelodeon and slimed Chicago 21-9. Now the Saints are going up against the Tom Brady-led Bucks in the battle of the 40-year-olds. And there are talks that this may be Breeze's last run. And I think he's going to want to finish off on a high note, and I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Drew Breeze might be one of the most underrated players of all time, but I don't think he cares. That's how much this man means to these people. Thanks for watching the video. If you like longer videos like this, subscribe and like. And if you made it all the way here, comment down below your prediction for the Saints-Bucks game. But anyways, see you guys soon and peace out.